Any guess? Okay, that's good yeah, enough then. That's, yeah. <laughs> you know what? Actually, why don't uh, you take it away? Okay, so Sisu is a movie Captain mentioned. I had never heard of it before. And uh, it's about this one dude who's like a super soldier. They call him the Immortal, and he's out there killing Nazis. So that's the general gist of the film. It's pretty violent. <laughs> Sometimes it's a little unbelievable, but I kind of get what they're going for. The whole feeling of these action sequences where that like this guy is a badass and he's doing badass things. And uh, I, ha I had fun with it. What about you, Captain? Yeah, I think the film was a lot of fun to watch. It's very similar to John Wick, I'd say. Yeah, there is a dog um, involved. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, a, lot, a lot of people get pretty badly named at the end mm, yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> so i'd say this kind of reminds me of back when i was a kid sometimes i just go out with friends on a weekend to see a good action movie i don't think it's necessarily uh one that's gonna hold the test of time one that's gonna be anywhere close to where john wick was in that john wick sort of a household name i don't know that it's gonna catch on like that you can never go too wrong just killing nazis I definitely feel like there were times where he just got by or survived when he really realistically shouldn't have. Uh, yeah. Some of the times it just tread the line of barely realistic. Sometimes it's like, there's no way he should be alive right now. Overall, it was still a lot of fun to watch. It still has that John Wick violence. I don't think it was quite as action-packed as John Wick, per se. And I understand the actors on the older side, so we probably can't do quite as many stunts like that. But I think it works well for a standalone movie, and it shows that they can sort of use the John Wick style for other settings, I guess. And I'm going to speculate they might try different settings in the future. I don't know that they're necessarily going to continue the Sisu series, but I think it could work in some Midwestern style. But that's just me um, speculating right mm. now uh well we'll see what they do we'll see what they go on to make that's sort of an idea of where my thoughts are for the movie why don't we go into some nitpicks real quick before we move on to the rest of the movie i just have a few you mentioned before that mm. some scenes where it just didn't feel real and that he should have died so yeah yeah there's one major one that comes to mind for me uh, you mentioned the hanging scene to be yeah. honest i think that one just barely worked I felt like he was really resourceful there, and mm -hmm. I could just barely see him getting out of that. I think for a movie it works. Of course. You wouldn't yeah. see this sort of thing in real life at all. <laughs> he but. would just die instantly. <laughs> the scene that I was thinking of was when he came out of the water carrying a dead man on his back, and the guy oh, gets, yeah, says yeah. F this, and he goes into the tank and starts shooting him with the tank gun, and I was like, the machine gun on the tank, I was like, that guy's dead, man. That bullet would have ripped through both of them. <laughs> Same scene earlier yeah. where he um, just uses a shield. I think he said like Captain America. Yeah, like, Captain cool. America. It's just like a metal plate out of nowhere and everyone's shooting their SMGs. I mean, and I'm like, it looks, it looks cool, yeah. but you know, it's... What if they uh, shoot him in the stomach? Too, uh, <laughs> There's nothing blocking the stomach or, or his nuts. Or, you know? or the legs. Yeah, it the just, legs. Yeah. 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 I think one of the biggest scenes for me was, remember at the end when the plane crashes and oh. he just sort of, there weren't any parachutes left, yeah. so he just straps himself in. <laughs> Yeah, I was like, what is this? <laughs> you would have died. I, I don't quite remember where uh, they landed. It might have been in a swamp lake sort of area. It, it doesn't really show up, but he just comes out helps, of the water. But... So you assume he's in like a swamp yeah, or a lake. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's no way you come out of that well spine. Um, yeah. <laughs> intact. I had some points. minor nitpicks that I just wanted to mention real quick. So uh, other yeah, than yeah. that, uh, the music, the scoring was a little bit weird in the beginning where he's panning for gold. So the whole plot is mm -hmm. that he's panning for, I'm just saying this for the people who are listening because they might have not watched the movie, but uh, he's panning for gold. <laughs> we, probably, we should have given a spoiler warning first. Oh, yeah. Oh, spoilers, by the way. There's, we're talking about everything. <laughs> the dog dies. I'm kidding. The dog doesn't die. But he's panning for gold. He finds a huge gold vein, so the Nazis are going to steal his gold. And he's like, F it, I'm going to come back and take my gold. In the beginning, when he's paying for the gold, there's like this weird, ominous music playing when there's no reason for it to be. It's like, wrong. <laughs> he's, like he's just panning gold. 
And so it turns into this like melodramatic piece. And then he's like butt naked taking a shower or like just washing himself in the river. And the ominous music comes back. I was like, Bong. I was like, what's, what's going on? It's supposed to make you feel like uneasy, right? And I was like, hmm, is it, is it cause they're like the Nazis are coming? Like, but that's like a little bit later. So that felt just a teeny bit out of place for me. What did you think about that? Or did you even care at all about that part? <laughs> uh, it was really I short. Say, I, I usually yeah. try and keep an eye out for soundtracks nowadays. Uh -huh. Main, I guess mainly in games. I didn't remember too much of this soundtrack. I think I sort of forgot about it until you brought it up. I couldn't exactly say what they were going for. Maybe they were trying to set the mood that this is a... Like a serious film? Bad, sort of messed up place to be. Oh, but this isn't okay. Um, okay. a very friendly area. Sort of war ravaged, as it were. I don't quite remember how it plays out, though. So, it's I mean, fine. I guess it didn't yeah. stand out enough for me. It's it's not a big deal. It was just... I, I just noticed it was kind of... Um... Yeah, yeah. It just felt a little off. Also, another funny thing, a uh, little nitpick. I love how there's these slow scenes where they introduce the Nazis and they all look evil. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, that, I, I think they did yeah. a great job. With, yeah, um, they look evil. Them. Like, they look <laughs> evil, but they also look kind of worn down, too. Yeah, you yeah. Know? Uh, I also want to say they did a great job with the trailer and how they did a bit of misdirection. Because at first, it seems like it's this guy trying to just sneak past the Nazis just survive to get to a bank oh, but then okay. he then it shows him <laughs> stab that guy through the through the brain that part got it's me. a different type of movie yeah. going on i was just gonna say i'm pretty sure you know just historically speaking nazis were just like regular german dudes and i'm pretty sure they didn't look evil although i bet some of them did but I, you may be surprised <laughs> you might be surprised <laughs> You know, I was just thinking to myself where the, the Nazis are standing there and then they see someone like, oh, guys, Hans, there are people coming. Already get ready to put on your evil faces. <laughs> you know? It's like, hey, you look too happy. Put on your evil face. Uh, that's, I just thought of these they, like, skit Especially ideas. the first guy as he meets, yeah. I definitely see how, how that looks. Like um, the one line, the way he says something like, get off of the horse, just really. <laughs> I, I didn't say quite like him, but oh, I will say real quick. Sometimes I feel like they make the Nazis too incompetent, and I get, I get, mm, okay. you definitely do that. But sometimes I think it took a little bit away from them as a threat. One scene I really liked that they did was when they successfully capture him that one time because they find his dog and they use it to track him, but they stick dynamites on the they <laughs> like uh, attach dynamite yo, to the yo. dog. And that's that's such an evil thing to do. Yeah, I, I was gonna say, bro, what if they like couldn't tell how long to put the fuse and the dog just blew up? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I, like, <laughs> perfect timing, dude. It worked out pretty well. It did. It did. That was pretty evil, it's though. A, I was like, yo, yeah, come on, that, man. that was a that was a good direction to take. I think that was a smart move on their part. Yeah, that was a dumb dog, though. He's just like, like yeah, let me let me take this thing. Well, he didn't know better. I know, I, mean, I know. I'm pretty sure he doesn't know what dynamite does. I'm certain he doesn't understand that. <laughs> Wait, we should put this to the test. We should have a stick of dynamite and then a dog and be like, yo, is this good or bad? Just light it and then put it on the dog and see what happens. For science. I'm uh, just kidding, of course. <laughs> you lost me at hello. <laughs> yes, yes. I think there's the name of a trope that's like kick the dog or something. Or to make you just really hate the villains, they do something oh, yeah. just like kick a dog or yeah. kick a cat or kick an animal. Something like unnecessarily evil. Steal candy from a baby yeah. or attach dynamite to a dog. They should do that more often. Something like that. You mentioned you really like the scene where um, he's killing the guys underwater Dude. and then using their the bubbles from their airway to survive. Dude, that was so yeah. badass. He just slits their yeah. throat and then just like <laughs> sucks their air out. I was like, yo, what the heck, dude? I really like scenes, and they did a great job showing this. He's able to survive and thrive so much because he's resourceful, because yes. he makes the most of what he has. That's one of the best scenes that shows that, I want to say. Yeah. kind of see it when he's being hanged, too, although that's a bit, uh, a bit more over the top still. But yeah. I, I think it works just well enough because he's willing to impale himself on a nail to survive, which is brutal. I think it works really well with the film. It does. There's a lot of scenes like that too where he's stapling himself with like, I think it's barbed wire or something. He's yeah, where he's stitching his, himself Yeah, up. yeah, I thought yeah. that was pretty cool too. And um, I think he at some point uses gunpowder or something to light it ablaze and seal back the wound. 
seal the wound. Uh, yeah, he just like he lit a bunch of matches and he just stuck stuck it in there. I was like, mm. there's a lot too. So I I already remember the landmine scene too. That was a bit far fetched, but mm. I like what they're going for because it shows his resourcefulness. I feel like it was around or just before the landmine scene where he just spills all of his gold out in front of them mm-hmm. by the landmines. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. I feel like there's no way he gets out of this one. The way he just sort of got out of there in the end, blowing up one of the landmines and using the shield for cover. I felt that was pushing it a little bit. But oh, of course. Yeah. After that, I feel it really found its stride. He somehow dug up a landmine and he threw it at a dude's head and he exploded. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> There's some comedy uh, there too, because the guy's like, How many landmines do we bury here? And he's like, All of them. The thing that got me though is like, they bring out the women and they tie them together, and they're having the women folk walk in front of the tank to test for landmines, and they're okay. I was like, mm-hmm. What the heck? <laughs> Where did all the landmines go? Yeah, I felt that was a bit unrealistic. I feel I kind of know why they did that though. They wanted to keep the women around to get revenge in the end. Mm-hmm, of course. I feel like there was another scene you mentioned the other day. When he's beating up that one guy who was manning the tank with the commander. And then the guys behind catch up to him. Ah, uh, then... yeah. The, the <laughs> motorcycle dudes, they come up on yeah, him. Yeah. yeah, They just leave. <laughs> I'm like, what the heck? <laughs> just try shooting him at least. I will say, I think it's a bit cheesy the way it's done. Or at least trying to see it from where they'd be at. I kind of see it. This guy supposedly survived a hanging while he was murdering the whole yeah. uh, convoy. Yeah, I get, I get it. I all get the bodies it. coming yeah. down. <laughs> Yeah, I, I get it. They're like, oh, is that that guy? Yeah. <laughs> They're like a bunch of guys who are like run over by tanks and, and their cars and like, oh, is that is that him? No way. <laughs> yeah, the wildest yeah. thing for me is like you hanged him and then he just comes back. The, the part that got me though was the guy who did the hanging. He's like, yo, this is my rope. This is the rope I used to hang out. I was like, how do you know rope looks like rope, bro? Did you like put your initials on there? Did you sign it? Like, I don't get how he recognized it. It's like, I made this rope with my own two hands, you know? Maybe it was a thing back then, you know, maybe, maybe it's historically accurate. I just don't know. I, I just rope looks the same to me. You know what I mean? All rope looks the same to you. Yeah. Okay. I'm sorry. It's the... <laughs> I don't mean to offend any ropes out there, but, uh, there goes one out of 32 of your <laughs> and podcast listeners. I will say one thing. Mm. I liked how the acting for this movie was a lot of them looking very moody while staring off into the distance because there's very little dialogue. Yeah. 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 And I get what they're going for, but they kind of all just look like models doing it. <laughs> yeah. Like, you know, like <laughs> it reminded me of Zoolander a little bit. Like uh, Balenciaga? Line. Yeah. Yeah. Just, just a little <laughs> bit. Oh, another small nitpick. I just remember this too. The part mm. where, so there's a bunch of women folk who are obviously, they got captured and they're being just, just straight up women. women. Yeah. They're just being raped <laughs> by the soldiers. Like that's, mm. so it's like, ah, that's, that's well, messed it's up. It's mostly implied. It's yeah. mostly implied. There's a scene where they come up and they pull up next to a truck full of soldiers and they all shoot him. And I was like, that's cool. They deserve to take revenge. And that was awesome. But the one thing that got me, though, was the guns had no recoil when they were shooting it. It was perfectly still. And I was like, man, these women must be super buff, bro. It felt a little bit jarring because it was too perfect. Usually when you have, like, a shooting scene, they cut away or do the camera shake so you can't really tell. This one was, like, kind of still. And... I guess it might also emphasize the impact of the bullet as well. I kind of see what you're saying on that scene, but I'll say compared to everything else in the film. Yes, it's more believable. I, I don't think it really. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, it does kind of remind me when he kills that last guy. I thought that was really the way he did it was really cool. Ah, I yeah. remember when they were playing. Yeah. Dante Commander is beating him down, but he notices a giant bomb in the plane, and he's using like a wire wrapped around his fist, if I remember correctly, mm-hmm. to make his punches leave more of an impact. Sisu catches the wire, attaches it to the bomb, drops this giant, like, mortar bomb. And I thought that was such a perfect way to take out the head guy. Yeah, and it's funny because as he's going down, he sticks up the middle <laughs> finger and says, F you. <laughs> as he's like, I was like, respect. At least he went out, you know, with a bang. I, I got slight um, Kung Fury vibes from that. Ah, uh, yeah. I was thinking, what's that old, old school film, Black and White? Dr. Strangelove. The scene where the guy's on the bomb is riding it down. 
I I don't remember that one. Uh, it's a super I old. Guess I haven't seen that. Yeah, if you watch the end scene, you you'll recognize it because that's uh, it's an iconic. It, it's used in memes as well. It's just the guy going woo <laughs> while he's writing a, a atomic bomb down. I guess my only other comment for Sisu is that at the end, when he finally takes his gold to the bank, gets in bills. It didn't seem like his story completely wrapped up, as it were. It still felt a little bit open-ended, mm -hmm. at least a little potentially open-ended. I guess that's more just what I was mentioning earlier about how they could do more with it. I think I mentioned this the other day as well. I'm not 100% sure, but the guy kind of reminded me of that one real-life Finnish soldier who killed a bunch of Russians invading during World War II. Yeah, you mentioned it, the White Death, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if it was partially inspired by him. I just feel like it's worth mentioning and bringing up that similarity. Mm. The name they gave for the game was Atami Korpi, and he said 300 confirmed Russian kills, and I was like, yo, when he dies, he's, he's going to have a really good KDR. <laughs> I was like, what an insane KDR, bro. <laughs> Uh, he's okay. gonna have the highest gamer yeah, score around. He's gonna, he, he is. He's gonna go out on top. Another thing was, dude, he uses the pickaxe in like unfathomable ways. Like he uses to kill people. He uses it to. Oh, when you said that, I I just remembered this. This is probably the worst case of it, where it's like he shouldn't be alive here, but mm -hmm. when they're getting away with the plane and he just um ah uh, yeah he hooks onto it with his uh. His pickaxe, pick yeah. Axe, and then <laughs> there's a scene where he loses grip on the pickaxe and ends up towards the or tail At least end. I think so. Yeah. Climbing on, yeah, yeah. And that just that that was one of those scenes, especially where they're just they're really, really pushing it. And what yeah. you could you could really see him getting away with. Yeah, it. so see like, him doing realistic. Dude, work. I don't understand how you mine through an airplane with a pickaxe with one hand. <laughs> I mean, he's like, he's mining a hole in the plane so he can crawl in. Anyways, yeah, he uses the pickaxe for everything. Like, he's attacking a tank with a pickaxe. He's killing dudes with a pickaxe. He latches onto an airplane with a pickaxe. And then pickaxes his way into the airplane. And uh, I was going to say, the moral of the story is upgrade your pickaxe. It may save your life someday, especially in the case of Nazis attacking. So Minecraft was uh, getting us ready for Nazi attacks. You need a diamond pickaxe, not the weak stone pickaxe. That's what I got out of the movie. It's worth noting, Ducky may or may not have been sponsored by a local pickaxe <laughs> yeah. corporation. Uh, don't expose this. me. So, uh, sponsored by, I don't even know what companies make pickaxes. I, I can't say I do either. Yeah. I'm not uh... DeWalt? <laughs> <laughs> Roby? Is, is there like electric pick that much world experience. Yeah. Is this a good time to move on to John Wick 4? Pretty much. I'm looking at my notebook and that's all I have for Sisu. But yeah, I will end with saying that I thought the movie was pretty cool. Uh, I think I totally agree with what you said earlier where like you just want a good action film. Sisu is right up your alley. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I used to every few weekends just on a friday night saturday night go to the movie theater with friends see uh just a fun action movie and this this reminded me of that i think a uh, one i'd seen back in the day was like shark night <laughs> just as cheesy as it sounds but um it's it's something fun to see i think we'll both agree it's probably not winning any oscars any um big awards like that but yeah, it doesn't have to just it just has to be yeah, fun. yeah yeah it's um it's a fun movie to catch. It'll probably, again, speculation, it'll probably come out pretty soon to streaming services. It wouldn't surprise me if you can get it free uh, with one of them or just find it somewhere. But I think it's worth checking out. Yeah. Wait, what was that movie you recommended me earlier that I watched? Was it Upgrade or what was that? Oh, um, Upgrade was one of them, yeah. Yeah, Upgrade is, this reminds me of Upgrade a, too. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I will say, I think I like Upgrade a bit more. Me too. I like the sci-fi vibes better. Yeah. yeah. That's uh, another for anyone movie. watching, Upgrade's a great yeah. movie to see. If you can. Yeah. Uh, Captain it's recommended me the movie. Lot, so I probably, can recommend yeah. it as well. I think it's pretty cool. It's pretty violent too. Yeah. So. It is pretty violent. Yeah. I was going to say it's been out for a while, so it's probably not that expensive to get. Or you mm. might be able to find it somewhere for free. 
<laughs> you can borrow it from your friend on the internet, you know, totally legal, <laughs> yes. Oh, is that what you did? Yeah, oh yes, yeah, definitely, my friend. You know, I gave it back, so as soon as I finished watching, I gave it back, so it's perfectly fine. It's an old meme from Kazaa where someone's downloading off of you, like you downloaded a movie off of Kazaa from someone, and then that person's downloading it back from you, and like, I'm taking my movie back. <laughs> I was going to say you share it with the people. Yeah, yeah, something like that. I used to do that with games with my friends back in the day. Just small off topic, but my friend back in high school was a massive pirate, and he would go to Blockbuster and rent like PlayStation 1 and 2 and Dreamcast games and burn them. And then he would have a binder full Ooh. of burn games that he would just give to me. <laughs> and he was, uh, he, he had like a really fast internet and a good computer so he could emulate those games back then, but I couldn't. So I was like, I can't do anything with this, buddy. <laughs> I did not have that. It seemed for a while pirating things was pretty popular. And honestly, it kind of seems like it might come back with all the um, all the new Aww. different streaming services. Yeah, like but Netflix also cracking down on password sharing. Uh, bad move. Bad move, Netflix. Yeah. Did they actually do that? Because I haven't noticed that affecting mine at all. They've but... done that for other regions, and they will do it for the U.S. soon. Or sometime soon. So mm. it is unfortunate news. Yes, but... Netflix more like <laughs> no <to> flex. <laughs> Sorry, that was lame. Okay, got him. Yeah. That, well, yeah, but yeah. Uh, John John Wick Four. Yep. It's been a bit since I've seen it. Would you mind starting off first? Sure. Uh, so John Wick Four, the basics. Oh, by the way, full spoilers. <laughs> okay. So John Wick Four. John Wick is trying to get out of his uh, obligations to the table, and to do that, there's a convoluted plot. Not convoluted plot, but there's a, there's like a series of steps he has to go through because everyone's out to kill him, and this is his story of getting out of this life as a hitman. I just gotta say, I think the director is definitely getting better depends on your personal preference you may not like john wick for the best but for me when i watched it i thought that this showed that the director was growing and evolving the most there were a lot of nuance to the dialogue that i appreciated them might have come from it man as well because he contributes a lot when making these type of movies and i mean donnie again or yeah 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 donnie yeah okay i just call him it man that's fair yeah <laughs> But I thought as a whole, I thought there was a lot of things showcasing the director and just the people working on the film that it's constantly evolving and improving. And uh, man, not, not necessarily be the most fun John Wick movie, but I enjoyed it a lot and I appreciated all the stuff they put in this film. I uh, can't wait for the next one because apparently, um, I don't know if this is true or not, I saw it online. The next one. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, originally they wanted a deal for John Wick 4 and 5 to be shot back to back because it saves money. And the guy's like, uh, yeah, no, because he usually takes off some time to study and improve as a director. So when he makes a film, he wants it to be better than the last one. Not necessarily more fun or anything, but like in terms of him as a director, he'll better like some sort mm -hmm. of improvement to yeah to definitely improve it yeah you have to something yeah that so he's like everyone so he declined it for. and i understand why you say next one question mark because of what happened at the ending but anyways i mean we, we can probably spoil it yeah at least uh, <laughs> yeah i was almost very yeah. certain he died and was buried in the ground mm -hmm. i mean mm -hmm. i know he gets away with a lot but you never know. You I, never I don't know. There him. are some conspiracy I don't see theories. Him off that one. <laughs> there are some conspiracy. Like they were saying, the dog wasn't looking at the grave, and it was looking somewhere else. So John Wick was standing somewhere else. But it's spoilers. Yeah, it's, apparently John Wick dies at the end. So, <laughs> all right, Kevin. Apparently, apparently I mean, <laughs> air quotes. Okay, that's that's pretty much it. I liked it a lot. I liked it a lot. I had a lot of fun with it. Uh, there's some comedy in the action scenes. It's clean. There's a lot of scenes that are clean, but there's also scenes that are a little bit, felt a little bit goofy, but it, in like a fun way. Like it reminded me of Jackie Chan films where it's comedic action and they had a lot more of that. And I enjoy that too. I enjoyed a lot of stuff. And they, you know, there's some scenes where you, like you see this, and, but you, you kind of let it slide where 
the guy who got hit is like in his staggered animation like in a video game you know he's kind of like recovering a little mm -hmm. bit to let the actors reposition get ready and then continue the action i enjoyed it it was fun i think that one description like a video game yeah it's a video <laughs> it, it feels like a video game pretty for, well yeah. for most of most of it especially for that one scene where he fights that one you described him as that one fat guy with the kicks oh dude that was that, so that good felt especially like the boss in a club area from like beat him up game yeah it reminded me of rufus from street fighter because he, he got fat because he, he lost to a fat guy oh, so rufus. he's like he's like yeah yeah i know you talking yeah about. you know like he felt like rufus dude that guy is awesome Rufus is the big, just sort of round, big yeah. round kid. Right? <laughs> he's, he's literally he has really round. fast attacks. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I love that scene because when they walk in, it's just a really fat dude who's sweating and like he looks weak and he has like an asthma inhaler. And then they play a card game and he puts down like a five of a kind, which is clearly cheating, you know? <laughs> the whole scene is ridiculous and then they start fighting and he just runs away, he like waddles away. So you're like, Oh, this guy's a loser. Well, he did. I think he did get his neck sliced before that. Oh, yeah. Uh, John Wick threw the, the card, card at his something. neck and sli sliced his neck a little bit. And there's a scene where he puts his thumb into the neck hole. And that reminded me of Sisu. <laughs> yeah, so you're, you think he's a loser. And then he starts fighting John Wick and just destroys well, he him. He starts throwing some massive kicks. Yeah. Like, like um, head kicks. Giant. Like, like yeah. Moves you need really, really in insane flexibility for it looks awesome because he's fat too. Like, yeah. I mean, it's a fat suit, but like, <laughs> it looks amazing. It looks really silly, but it works well. Yeah, like a video game, like you said, it just reminded me of. Yeah, Street yeah, Fighter. yeah. That scene felt like a beat him up. Really, that guy felt like the yeah. area boss for sure. So I guess my overall thoughts of the movie, I think it really did a great job with the action scenes again. Mm. I somewhat disagree with Ducky. I don't think that the story completely held together and i will say that the rule he tries to uphold to challenge the guy who's after him to a duel it seems a bit forced it doesn't seem to fit the world so to speak i mean i know there's a lot of moments that don't really seem realistic that's a huge understatement but yeah <laughs> i mean that that part about introducing a duel to get yeah. out of all his problems to get out of being hunted by the table, by the whole organization. And I think he kills the head of the group pretty early on. And the main guy that's hunting him is a... I got the impression he was a French millionaire, billionaire, with a lot of resources and his own assassin. He keeps saying there's wolves. There are wolves. What's that? He keeps saying there's rules, but he says it with the W. There are wolves. <laughs> What happens when you break the wolves? <laughs> I'm hunting Webbits. Webbits, yes. I don't know if he worked too well as a villain. He was definitely on the more pathetic side, more mm, cowardly mm, side. Yeah, yeah. He didn't really seem to have, at least it was never shown in the film, any combat ability. None of it's ever shown <clears throat> if he does. Uh, he just seems to be a rich guy that bosses people around and just exploits the people that he has. And he's shown to be very cowardly, very afraid of John Wick at the end. To get it, man, Donnie Yen's character, he threatens to kill his daughter. And he sort of hides behind him, especially for the duel, instead of facing John Wick himself. He sicks Donnie Yen on him under threats of killing his daughter. My for a life. Is that a line from I his? think so. They only take life and they only give death. That's another line, too. Oh, yeah. I know I've heard that in the movie. I just can't remember it too well now. I guess it has been a bit, but I guess for now, that's all my thoughts on it. Yeah, so uh, I agree with the story. Like, the overall narrative plot is kind of weak. Uh, it always has been, but I wanted to say that I, I think it felt more subtle and nuanced, so I wanted to point out some lines that really stuck out to me. There's one line where it says, friendship means little when it is convenient. And I was like, Yo, that's very true. This is the part where the New York concierge, the hotel is destroyed. And so Winston, the manager, has uh, lost his hotel. John Wick goes to the Japan hotel where... When you say lost, they blew the whole thing they, up. They, they literally blew the whole thing up. Yeah. And I was like, I don't understand. <laughs> Why would you do that? 
So he goes to the Japan Hotel where he's friends with the manager there. It's something like he owes him a debt or something. Yeah, and so he's like, don't help him. His, his, his daughter is pleading with him. Look, they destroyed a New York mm-hmm. hotel. Don't help him. And he's like, well, friendship means little when it is convenient. That line kind of gets thrown out when he's talking to other people. Going back, I really like the conversation between the manager and the Tokyo manager and it man. Because they're talking about their daughters, right? It's like, how's your daughter? And, and then he goes, how's your daughter? And then the guy, it man, Danya says, alive versus well from the, the manager of the hotel. This is intentional because they're copying these one-liners that are super obvious because, you know, alive means my daughter's alive, but I'm disconnected from her. And then whereas well means... That's the only thing that matters to him, not how she is. Yeah, yeah, that too. Just that she's there. That exactly, she's, yeah. exactly. And then... And that's, uh, it almost seems more selfish that she... I mean, I understand too, because... To be alive more than anything. Yeah. For him, almost. And then, Maybe and I didn't quite word that right, but... I get where you're coming from. And then he says well, meaning that, you know, she's doing well. I'm in her life, and then, you know, I care about her. And so I thought that was really cool. It's super obvious, though, when they do stuff like this. You know, when Morpheus is giving his eloquent speech, he's talking to Winston, and they left Winston alive, and they killed his concierge instead. I was like, no, not not the dude. <laughs> the quiet dude with the awesome voice. And then they're like, why did they leave you alive? And then it's because everyone who's left alive is either a traitor or a coward. And then Morpheus is like, which one are you? And he's like, I'm aggrieved. <laughs> you know, I want revenge. I was wronged. So the conversation leading up to that is not what real people would say. You know, it's not real lines. It's more like the conversation is written to get that one line where Winston's it's like, I'm a green. Yeah. yeah. So like, so it's got sort of like that, but a line versus well, I thought was more subtle and nuanced, but there's m- more of that. And I thought that was pretty nice touch. Also, I like how John Wick's lines, Keanu's lines are very limited. I hate this when someone is talking a different language. So the guy is speaking Japanese. I was looking at Keanu. I was like, please don't respond in terrible Japanese. And he said nothing. And I was like, awesome. And then uh, like a few minutes later, he says something in Japanese that's terrible. But it was very short. So I was like, thank you. (laughs) It breaks it for me when... Because, you know, I've listened to a lot of anime. Anime fans, you know, when they hear Japanese, they're like, oh, this, this doesn't sound very good, <laughs> you know? Or like for me when it's Korean, I was like, oh, that's, that's, not how, that's not how it sounds, you know? Like, it's just a little jarring for me. Like, oh, you can just use English, it's fine, <laughs> you know? Yeah. I, yeah. I think I mentioned to you, Tekken does a, an interesting thing. Yeah. It's like yes. the Tekken uh, video games where they just keep one version be it english spanish german japanese and they just keep the one voice actor through all the languages they just keep their own unique language where they're from with one voice actor no other dubs and i think it works really well they just subtitle everything i think that's awesome i think that takes balls to do it one quick note i like the pencil reference where they're like have you seen what he did with the pencil in john wick one and then you see Donnie Yen grab a pencil and he uses to stab a dude. <laughs> I thought that was kind of funny. I thought that was a neat touch. I feel yeah. like that's one of those scenes I should remember. Uh, yeah, it's just because there's like a rule where he's fine. Again, this is a convoluted plot where there's like the leader of the, um, the marquee, the head of the table. And he uh, has like a yeah, henchman. Yeah, and then they're like, oh, you can't kill me. So it man is, Diane is working for the Marquis, so he can't actually attack the guy with the weapon. So he just stabs him with the pencil and then he just punches him. And I was like, okay, kind of weird oh, rules, but I, I know what you're talking yeah. About now. I thought it was kind of weird, you know. Also, this is one quick thing there's a flight of stairs that he has to walk up and then he just rolls Several all the times. way down. <laughs> to the beginning like he, he's like going up killing people left and right and at the end he gets like hit and he just keeps yeah, rolling down step. yeah he needs to get to the dual location on yes. time or he forfeits and they keep hunting him forever the marquee guy doesn't want him to get there so he sends all his henchmen bounty, after yeah. him. and at yeah. that final step i swear he gets kicked he fights his way up this giant flight of stairs gets kicked down rolls for like a minute straight <laughs> Does he get kicked down again, or I, I think twice, maybe. Before he gets kicked down, the last of it. Uh, I don't remember, but when I saw it, I was like, "This is playing getting over with Ben Fadi." When you're close to the end, then you go all the way back to the beginning. 
I was like, no, <laughs> why? Why have you done this? I guess his role uh, form is excellent. If that was Keanu, whoever the stunt person was, if it's a, it's a stunt double, that was excellent rolling. I'm not a, an aficionado of that sort of thing, but <laughs> I mean, I will say I don't really agree with you on the you said the diet. Well, I wouldn't say the movie was at all very subtle with the dialogue, with the action, with. Oh, everything's obvious, but there's some subtle lines of dialogue. I like the live verse as well. Like, I really like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, I guess to sort of track from what I was saying, two actors I really liked in this film were the guy who played Winston has always been really great at that role. Mm -hmm. And Tokyo Manager, I noticed I started to see him in more things. I think he was in Bullet Train. Mm. I think he was also in a Mazda commercial that's been running recently. <laughs> I really like his voice too. He does oh, a great job yeah. as the honorable Japanese samurai-esque type. I guess in Bullet Train he plays a kind of a similar role. Yeah, I think he has a great voice, and I think he does a great job in the role. I think the guy who plays Winston is also a really good touch. It's very suave. Yeah, he's very good at selling the world, yeah. I'd say, more than anyone else. I mean, like everyone else, goddamn, I love Keanu, but... Uh, he's flat, bro. Uh, <laughs> some of his lines are just really kind of cheesy, but they work well enough, I'd say. Yeah. He barely speaks anything more than, like... A word. <laughs> uh, seven words at a time. Yeah. I'll just be like... I need a gun. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I am pretty pissed off. I'm thinking I'm back. <laughs> I'm thinking I'm back. Yeah. Everyone's asking me if I'm back. Yeah. I'm thinking. <laughs> you, know, you know what that reminded me of? It's off topic, but uh, the Bane dialogue, the, the monologue, where it's like, oh, you were immediately adopted. <laughs> I was I born was in the dog. <laughs> Mordified. Yeah, molded by it. I didn't see the light until I was a man, and by then it was nothing but blinding. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah, that's why I appreciated how they left the emotional scenes to the other actors. I like the part where the, the, the samurai guy you're talking about, where he's fighting Donnie Yen, and it's like, just take care of your daughter. And he's like, I am. And he fights him until he dies, because that's the only mm -hmm. way to let his daughter live, because the table would kill him and the daughter, un unless he's dead. I was like, oh, okay, that's cool. There's, there's some scenes here where they're yeah. trying to There was one thing I mentioned yeah. that I didn't get. I guess maybe if you picked up on this and I didn't. He said something about how he gave his own eyes for the table. Oh, yeah, yeah. Did they go further into that or just... It's like implied, so when nobody, Mr. Nobody, he's just a dude with a dog, and I thought the dog oh, was... Yeah. Anyways. I felt this guy was the worst addition to the film i feel like he didn't really add much hey i could shoot you now and wait till you are worth more money but he does that several times the whole point of him is yeah. to show how awful marquise is and the way he treats him <laughs> talks down to him uh, when they make a deal uh, he like stabs his hand with a knife mm -hmm. to see if he's serious well i guess the premise to begin with is like i will wait till you are worth <clears throat> more money and then track you down i don't think he added much I don't think he was the best touch of the film. I don't know too much about the actor, how it was written. Yeah, I don't think it works too well in the film. Gotcha. I'm going to say, though, I think it's related because that scene, I was like, oh, why did they show it? But yeah, uh, there's a scene where he's trying to make a deal. Mr. Nobody is trying to make a deal with the marquee, and he snaps a knife through it, and it's like, okay, if you care about yourself, you'll pull the knife out. But if you're going to be loyal to the table, you'll pull your hand through the knife. So there's a real slow motion scene where he grabs the knife and it pulls his hand through it slicing his hand open in the process so that was quote unquote the cost of working for the table and for Donnie Yen it's implied that he had to blind himself to join the table oh uh, I can kind of see where yeah that's so that that was kind of yeah implied it's there. so counterintuitive though because that would make you much less I know <laughs> competent in doing what you're trying to do <laughs> Going back to Mr. Nobody, I thought he was a super funny character, like unintentionally, because he sounds like a creepy stalker where he's talking to John Wick and John Wick's like, I don't know you. And he's like, but I know everything about you. And he's like doodling pictures of John Wick in his notebook. And for some reason, he has his entire history in the notebook. I was like, how does this make sense? Like, who is he? Is he like his long lost orphan brother? Like, did, did they grow up together? Like, it doesn't make sense. Like, he knew where he was going to go, his old family, because he had, like, the emblem, that family crest. 
on his notebook. I was like, where did he get this? <laughs> you know? I feel like that character was weird, but I thought he was super funny because he was like a, a literal K-pop stan. He was a oh. John Wick stan, bro. He was like creepily stalking John Wick, having this parasocial relationship with him. And when he meets John Wick, John was like, I don't know who you are. <laughs> I feel like I'd seen that in John yeah. Wick 3 with the villain. I feel like it worked so much better in John Wick 3 with that one guy, the main villain in that one. He uses a samurai sword. He has a school that goes with him. I don't remember John Wick 3. So um, you have to uh, explain a little bit more. So in the third one, there's this one bald Japanese guy who serves as the main assassin to counter John Wick. And this is in the third movie. He mainly uses swords, knives, that sort of thing. One of his gimmicks is suddenly appearing behind people and then killing them. You remember that one guy with the pigeons? Pigeons? He has that whole underground network. I think he's briefly in oh, the fourth movie. You mean Morpheus? The, yeah. The well, Hobo King? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yes. He slices him up in the third movie as punishment for helping John Wick in oh, uh, previously. Okay. okay. I think it's slowly coming back. But he, he works as a much better sort of creepy stalker character. When they both get to the sanctuary, when they both get there, John Wick takes a seat after their motorcycle chase. And despite nearly killing each other, he just goes right next to him and takes a seat. <laughs> and you can tell John Wick's really uncomfortable with this guy. And he, he talks about how they're both masters of death, how they're both masters of the arts, and how it's an honor to meet him, despite him being there for the sole purpose of killing John Wick. Mm. He's a huge fan, even kind of a stalker. I feel like that worked much better in the third movie than in this one. Now that you mention it, I, I do agree with that. Although there was a cool scene where he has a backpack he's carrying. He like straps on this vest with guns on it in the front and it's bulletproof. I thought that, was, that scene, action-wise, I thought that was kind of neat. It was kind of weird how everyone seemed to have bulletproof jackets. I don't know. It makes sense in that sort of world where you'd have bulletproof stuff clothing. Like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But I feel like they overemphasized it. Like there's some scenes where it almost seems like it's nullifying rather than just like what they'd actually do, disperse the impact. And they don't even seem to feel it at times, which just doesn't seem quite right. And yeah. there are also really over-the-top scenes where at the Tokyo Hotel, they had sumo wrestlers with, I think they had body armor and like knives attached to their forearms and were just mowing through some of the guys. I was going to say, that reminded me for the Tokyo Hotel scene, there's a fight. And I really like how they handle the fight with the girl, so the daughter of the manager. She's like wearing this robe, and when she takes it off, she's just wearing like full ninja gear. <laughs> that, that was kind of funny. There's a fight scene where she's just like scurrying around these dudes and just like stabbing them with knives. And there's one where there's a giant dude who's just like a, a mountain. And then there's a fight where I felt it was kind of not really full realistic, but more realistic than what you see in other films where she's clearly outclassed in terms of strength. So she has to rely on agility and mm -hmm. speed. And then there's a scene yeah, where, yeah. yeah, he's just like, she's like playing ice climber. She's like using her knives to climb up this giant six foot dude by stabbing him in the back multiple times as she gets higher. And then she can stab him in a vital spot. I was like, yo, that's, yeah, that's cool. She stabs him in the neck, yeah. I want to say, at the end. So I, I thought that was pretty yeah. neat. It just reminded me of Birds of Prey where at first I thought the action scenes were good. But then when I was recording the podcast for that with my homies, they were like, oh, yeah, just watching it again. The action scenes were pretty unbelievable where there's like these super, I mean, they can be strong, but like there's like six foot, 300 pound dudes just walking up. And then these girls are just flipping them like it's nothing. And I was like, yeah, that, that would not happen. Even if you were trained. Yeah. I, I agree with you there. Yeah. Um, I like how they show despite the difference in ability, his strength is a big factor and she has to be yeah. resourceful in how she takes him out. It makes it feel more significant, more burned. You it know? does. I also, just briefly mentioning for the Tokyo scene, the marquee people are the only one wearing the bulletproof suits. John Wick has one. And then they bring in the, the super soldiers from, was it John Wick 3 or 2? Anyways, it's funny because that's when the arrows come in handy. <laughs> so they're busting out bows and I was like, what the heck, bro? Why don't you use guns? And then, but then they're like, they're bulletproof. So I was like, okay, that makes sense. And the bow combat was kind of neat. There's a very small comedic 
scene I felt like was improv where Donnie Yen is just hiding in the dark and eating noodles in the kitchen. <laughs> it's just like a few seconds, but instead of fighting, he's just like eating. He doesn't want to be there because he's also friends with the Tokyo manager. I thought it was pretty cool. I just want to say there are some comedic action shots where there's a poor guy. They have bulletproof face masks, which don't really work. You're going to get your face messed up if you get shot <laughs> in the face. But anyways, let's just pretend he's completely bulletproof. He gets shot in the face and he gets knocked back into a drum. So John Wick keeps like hitting him in the face or shooting him in the face and he keeps getting hit into the drum and you hear a drum noise. There's one part where he's like pretend to punch him so he blocks his face and he just punches him in the nuts. He uses nunchucks too. There's some really funny action sequences in there. there there's some humor to the brutality, certainly. <laughs> it almost feels like a dance, how they yeah. do it. Yeah, so it, it, it reminded me of Jackie Chan. Yeah. Like, it reminded me of Jackie Chan movies, where it's like comedic oh, yeah. action. I mean, less violent, but yeah. Yeah. <laughs> anyways, that's it. That's just what I wanted to talk about for the Tokyo scene. There's probably more, but anyways, back to you, Did you Kevin. want to talk about the final showdown they have? Oh, yeah, yeah. I have a question about that, and maybe you can answer this. Yeah, I was sure. a little confused about this, because... They're like, they start off and there's a duel between Donnie Yen and John Wick. They have to use dueling pistols. For this to work, mm -hmm. obviously he has to take off his bulletproof suit. They get one shot. So it starts off at 30 paces. Both people take 30 steps. And then so after they shoot and they miss, they have to take 20 steps towards each other. And at the final stage, they have to take 10 steps. But if you add it up, that's 30. So shouldn't they be back to where they started, like right next to each other? Did they mess up there, or are they just taking smaller steps because they're injured, because they did get shot? To be honest, I couldn't say. It's been a little bit since I've seen the movie. I don't remember some of the specifics. I don't even remember how close they were when they started. I guess they were back they to back. They were back like to back. Said. Yeah, they were back to back. And okay. then, yeah, so I, I was a little confused there, but, you know, I, you saw it coming, but, uh, you know. To be honest, I think I've seen enough movies like this that I sort of get that. He never just dies like that. There's always a little trick or something to be aware of. At the beginning, I think they both sort of graze each other. Then they go in a few steps. I don't remember the specifics. I think they both get pretty badly injured here. Then they go in very close to each other. And on the cue to draw, Donnie Yen shoots John Wick to the ground before anything else can happen. Marquis now wants to step up and deliver the final blow. But when he enters himself into the duel, that means John Wick can shoot him by those duel rules. And that's exactly what he does. He plays dead, takes the shot, and when he gets the chance, he shoots Marquis right through the head. Mm -hmm. That was satisfying. He was this very arrogant, cowardly character who honestly doesn't make any practical decisions or reasonable <laughs> decisions. Yeah, he's, and, he's um, kind of an idiot. <laughs> yeah. He maims the people who work for him. He treats them very poorly. He slices their hands. He demolishes hotels. <laughs> and his obsession seems to be defeating John Wick, as it were. He thinks that'll elevate his status, make him a legend, so to speak. And that's why he steps in at the end to try and be the one to do it. I guess he works well enough as a villain. I don't know that he's especially memorable. There is one scene I really did like. The scene after the Marquis has Mr. Nobody pull his hand through the knife. They struck a deal, right? So he shakes his hand. And then after he shakes his hand, he wipes his hand with a handkerchief and then throws it to the ground. And I thought that was really good acting there for me. In that short scene, it shows that he cares enough about the rules on a superficial level where he's like I need to show good manners by shaking his hand but then he's disgusted by the blood on his hand or maybe he just looks down on him so he wipes his hand and he just throws it to the ground <laughs> you know so I thought that was a nice touch there he could try to look into more symbolic meaning towards it he doesn't yeah. like to get his own hands dirty oh that's good too bro yeah, you, you can yeah. always you can always go that route and say yeah, hey there's yeah. actually secret meaning for this you know yeah and sometimes you can. there's just, no, sometimes there's no sometimes meaning there's just <laughs> <laughs> but one thing i would like to say though is the reason why i brought the scene up is he's uh, not environmentally friendly he's trashing the environment right whereas john wick when you watch him he doesn't do this on all scenes i thought this was hilarious when he empties a magazine he puts it back into his holder and he pulls out a new one so he doesn't throw the mag away. <laughs> There's a lot of scenes where he'll like put it back in. 
And I was like, yo, John Wick, he's, uh, he's environmentally friendly. He's not like Reaper in Overwatch where he just throws a whole gun out and pulls out a new gun. You know, <laughs> he's saving his magazines, bro. I thought that was super funny. I was not prepared for an environmentalist standpoint yep. Yep. on the film. That's why John Wick won. He's more environmentally friendly, you know. <laughs> his garbage footprint is way smaller. It's a secret message hidden in John Wick 4. It's about the environment. I'm being sarcastic, huh. obviously, but... Really? I love I'm the done. Dragon's Breath scene, dude. <laughs> where he uses the shotgun shells that ignite. That mm -hmm. looks so cool with the overhead view that's spinning. It looked like Hotline Miami, where he's just like yeah, lighting yeah. dudes on fire, and then he shoots them again because they're not dead, but they're on fire. That uh, was with the incendiary rounds, I yes. say. Yeah, yeah. That was awesome. That, that definitely was one of the more <laughs> video gamey so yeah. feels. Yeah, Hotline Miami is... I thought the same thing when seeing it, especially with the layouts, the way you saw it from a top-down yes. perspective. That's why I was saying that John Wick 4... Where does John Wick 4 stand for your personal rating out of all the John Wick movies before you give the answer? I just want to say, like, even though it might not be the most fun for everyone, when I saw all these scenes and different things the director was attempting, I could see that for John Wick 4, that the director was definitely uh, trying out different things and trying to step it up a notch. I could definitely appreciate that. But yeah. Yeah, I want to know, like, where does John Wick 4 stand... Compared to uh, the other John Wick movies for you. Uh... That's hard to say. Yeah. Hmm. I think, to be honest, I want to say the third one is probably my favorite. Ooh, okay. If not just because it's probably the most over the top. Uh, there's a scene in the third one where he kills someone with a horse. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> where him and another guy just keep throwing knives and tomahawks at each other. I remember uh, that scene, yeah. And the guy he's fighting is, instead of using guns, he almost exclusively uses swords. And they have a nice sword fight at the end. Oh, and there's also that one scene where he fights, like, this massive seven-foot guy. I think he was a basketball player in real life. And he, like, has to break his neck with a book. Oh, dude. I, oh, man, you're bringing up all these memories I forgot. Yeah. They also had a really yeah. good motorcycle scene. That too. Fight scene. Yeah, I feel um, like John Wick 4 incorporated hmm. all of these scenes that we already saw in yeah, the Yeah, it, it was films. the most over-the-top, I'd yeah. say. I think 2 is also a little bit over-the-top. And number two, there's that one moment where he fights this, like, I think the guy is a sumo wrestler in real life, and he has to shoot him like, seven times. Two or three of those is in the head to finish even, him off. Even but, his head uh, is fat. <laughs> mm, I think in the second, he also kills a few people with a pencil, so that ties into the legend they built up mm, in the first okay, one. Okay. I think there's a lot of number two, and I guess number one as well, that I can't remember right now. At least my favorites, from what I can remember, is probably John Wick 3. If not just because I like the really over-the-top stuff, especially the one-on-one -on -one fights. I'll have to rewatch yeah. number three. And they also had a really interesting moment where he's fighting the disciples of the main assassin that's after him. And he straight up loses. They had one, two opportunities where they very clearly could have killed him. But they want to go again. They want to go another round. So they help him back up. He just narrowly manages to beat them by taking off his belt and using it to counter their knives at the end. I was trying something new, where there's a moment he actually lost. So number three is probably my favorite, and after that, I honestly don't know. It's hard to say. I feel like one had the best world building, as it were. The first one, you can always set a good structure in mind, and after that, it's kind of difficult to play around with it, to add in new storylines that are still consistent. It was the starting point. It had the best direction in terms of where the narrative was going, and the best world building as well. And they did a great job in how they introduced John Wick, who he was, what he did for them, and why this was so much of a problem for the Russian mobster. Honestly, I think it might be John Wick 3, John Wick 1, and then I can't decide between John Wick 2 or John Wick 4 after that. Mm. I guess for now that's where I'm at. John Wick 3, then John Wick 1, then 2 and 4 tied for me. I guess that's what I can say for now. Mm, okay. Yeah, for me, I don't what really have you? a rating. It's just they're all... Oh. all just like just in a cloud together because they're all different going back to what you said about one having the best world building i felt like ford it kind of took a step backwards because there's one scene i really didn't like i find this very funny where you know instead of the um the telephone switchboard which i thought was pretty cool with the operators they have like mm -hmm. these little transparent boards where they just literally just stick stuff on there you know <laughs> or like this is john wick's current location I felt that was a little goofy. I understand they're trying to keep the tone the same. 
One scene I really didn't like was when they had the radio host playing the music and updating people. I like the music playing in the scenes. That was okay. That didn't feel it belonged in that world, you know? I don't know. It felt a little, a little off tonally. I don't feel like you would just be listening to a radio station and then they're just giving you the information. That kind of ruins the mystique mystery of how these things work. It's better if you just give them a little hint and a little taste. You don't really have to explain everything or show everything. Then it works better that way. If you have to explain everything, then it's just too dumb. It's not real. That's why it feels good because the people are NPCs. You know, like when they're fighting in the club with the fat man, most of the people don't react. And I like it better that way. But there was a scene where everyone's getting scared. And I was like, oh no, now it feels too real. It ruined it. And so they only do that for a few scenes. When they're fighting in the street, we're playing real life Frogger with these cars. There's a scene where he gets thrown into a van. There's a huge dent and the car just stops and then no one comes out. I was like, this is better. It's better that these people are NPCs. I know it doesn't feel real, but it, that's the whole point. If it did feel real, then you have to question everything else. Like, the physics of the guns, okay, like you said, with the bulletproof suits, like it would only prevent the bullet from going in. You would still have massive internal bleeding and broken bones. <laughs> you would potentially die after getting shot a couple of times. It didn't fit for me, that scene with the radio host just you know, spelling everything out for these guys. That I kind of didn't like. Also, the people getting scared in the club, I didn't feel like that fit. It would be better if they just ignored it. I don't know where I'd stand on that, really. Because, I mean, on one hand, you want to make it a semi-believable world. But mm. on the other hand, it is very far from what reality is. Yeah. I feel like in John Wick 2, they had some scenes sort of like that. Do you remember where him and the other guy who's after him were shooting each other yes. through a... They're shooting each other through a water fountain. There are a bunch of people around. They miss each other, but they also miss everyone else there. Yeah. <laughs> no one else seems to pick yeah, up on yeah. That was another scene where it felt like this is too far, too far gone to... Yeah. I like that. <laughs> I like that. Okay, mm -hmm. I guess it's not real then. Then it's okay. Everything here, it doesn't have to be real. That's why I like it. I think you have to strike a balance where it's like, this is not real, but it's also believable. And that's super hard to do all the time. I feel like John Wick 1 kind of nailed that tone. Yeah, 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 yeah. In the first film where you're introducing all these roles, you still have to have... For most anything, you have to have something to ground it, you know? Yeah. Ever since that first film, I think they've really been upping how ridiculous and over the top some of it is. A lot of the time it works really well. Sometimes a bit on the sillier side when it's just too unrealistic. Yeah. I mean, a lot of the time it still works pretty well. The big thing for me is that when you break the rules of your own world, when it doesn't seem like this would belong in this oh, uh, yeah. world you set up. Totally agree. That's why I didn't like the radio host. I feel like that would break their own rules because it's more secret, like hush-hush, like a system that doesn't make sense where everyone has a cell phone and they get text messages when the operators update it. Yeah, I mean, I like that in John Wick 2 much more than, like you said, with the radio channel in John mm -hmm. Wick 4. But in John Wick 2, it seemed like he wasn't the biggest threat to them at this point, and it just sort of played out as business as usual, just another yeah. game, just yeah. another target. And I feel like that worked pretty well. I think it worked well enough in John Wick 2, how they did it. I gotta rewatch these movies so I can see how it kind of evolved, I guess. I don't remember a lot of the details anymore. I'm kind of with you there. Some of the specifics are yeah. a bit lost to me right now. But... I think that's the point, though. Like The action is the, the main yeah. focus. You remember the most significant parts, for sure. The parts that stick with you are the ones to look back on. The oh. ones that really made the biggest impression. Yeah, one weird part, though, speaking of things that leave you impression, what is up with the guy whose right. only lines are, I am Klaus, I am Klaus, <laughs> and he just oh. slaps John Wick, and then he, and then he leaves, and he's like, I am Klaus, it's like, I am Groot, or my name Jeff. Yeah, quick comic relief character. I guess it's it kind of felt a little weird, but... <laughs> I don't think the film would have really suffered without him. One quick side note I wanted to add, I like how to get the family crest, they have to burn their arm on the side of a hot pot, and then to fix it, they drink vodka and then pour vodka over their burn. That reminded me of Resident Evil 8. When he heals himself, he pours the alcohol oh, over yeah. it. <laughs> so I was like, yeah, the vodka heals everything. In Russia, vodka heals you. But also, I thought that was a little silly because John left the family, so he lost his ticket. 
I mean, a, like a burn on your arm seems kind of irreversible. Like, how do you lose that? Or like, how do you, you know, like, wouldn't you use something a little bit easier to like revoke? <laughs> you know what I mean? It felt a Stabbed little. his hand like that other guy. Yeah, yeah, him. yeah. Like it just felt a little, mm, like tonally. Like, in terms of like the tone being consistent, I feel like John Wick Four is definitely the weakest in that. There's a lot of good ideas and a lot of things that I like seeing, but it doesn't feel mm-hmm. cohesive from one part to another. Like the radio host updating people and playing music, that was cool, but like. It didn't really fit with everything else going on. Like I think the music would be less pressing than yeah, yeah. the information. It felt a little disjointed. That's what I felt like. Just a tiny bit. Mm. It's not that, that those yeah, scenes were bad. It's just like, you know. Yeah. It's not as Once cohesive. again, I think Mr. Nobody was the... The worst. <laughs> biggest, well, honestly, kind of, yeah. And I definitely see what they're going for with the inclusion of his dog. Putting a somewhat of a parallel between him and John Wick. I don't think it worked very well in that movie. Mm. And it just seemed a bit goofy. There's some points where he like has him in sight and it's like, wait, I can't do it. He's not worth enough money. It just seems a bit silly. It almost seems once again, like they had him just to put him through the ringer and show how much of a bad guy this Marquise is in comparison. For Mr. Nobody though, there was one scene I did. Uh, I'm not sure if I liked it, but it was a nice touch. Like, it felt a little out of place, but I thought it was a nice nod where Mr. Nobody has a dog and he always uses commands like attack or nuts and a dog will go get the nuts. Like, literally bite down on the nuts. I can't imagine that. <laughs> but anyways, there's a part where the number one henchman of the Marquis is gonna mm-hmm. shoot Mr. Right Nobody's there. dog. And then John Wick has an option of shooting Mr. Nobody or the henchman. And he sees the dog. He just looks at the dog. He looks at Mr. Nobody and he shoots the henchman to save the dog. He's a dog lover. You know, that's why everyone loves John Wick. He saved the dog. And then after that, him and Mr. Nobody are kind of buddies at that point. Not really, but like, he's like, oh, you saved my dog, so I owe you one kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. It was was a bit weird how that guy flipped around quite a bit. Yeah, it it didn't really fit. So again, that's where I I mean, like the movie feels disjointed. It was a nice nod to the origins of John Wick and how he's still a dog lover. But it kind of felt a little out of place. Something else that sort of came to mind. I didn't see this video, but on YouTube I saw the title of the video. That was something like, what was the point of John Wick? I'd go as far as to say his story is at an end. It very clearly looks like he's probably dead. I don't see how they'd bring him back from that. So if you look at his journey, after his wife died, she gave him a dog and hoped he could make a better life for himself. He doesn't do that at all. And even after his dog dies, he gets another one that the concierge looks after. He hasn't even named his dog yet. He hasn't even gotten on with that former of his life. And he just fell into his old assassin lifestyle. And the way he wants to be remembered is loving husband. It seems to imply he didn't want any of this. He didn't want to be involved in this world anymore. Maybe he was sort of drawn to it, as it were. I don't know. What's your take on that? I think the narrative is not really important because it's just a loose excuse for the action to happen. But they kind of shoehorn in the ending where they're like, oh, if John Wick kills the marquee in a duel and he wins and he becomes basically this martyr or saint character in in the world of assassins i think if he won it was considered that their disputes with the table and john wick would um, yeah yeah resolve. He, he would resolve but like the thing that was important was he becomes like a figurehead of uh, resistance to the, the table itself so he is a one man who went against the table and then got out unscathed you know well he died but like he he won so at that point, yeah, it becomes yeah. like a figurehead for everyone else to kind of, you know, rebel against the table. That's yeah, what Winston was that. talking about. So like, I feel like that's kind of the point of the John Wick character. I don't know if that was their intention from John Wick 1, but in John Wick 4, it's like a lame excuse where he becomes like this saint figure to all these assassins. That's what he is now. He's just a figurehead. He's the man who went against the table and he got out. He won. He won against the table. And, you know, that doesn't happen. Yeah, it's not really well written, it. but, like, it. Winston kind of has one line when he's talking to the marquee. They kind of shove that in there. 
it doesn't really work or fit you know with what what else they showed yeah i think that was like the point of his character for john wick 4 i also think they put that in there because they weren't sure if they were going to make another movie like if they did I mean, I then, yeah. it is maybe slightly open-ended with donnie yen yeah uh, and um the daughter of the tokyo manager wanting revenge against him yeah they don't show if he dies or not yeah well i mean i think it's implied that he survived he wasn't in that bad of shape and he definitely had the position to win the duel at the end oh really oh i thought you were talking about the after credit scene where uh the daughter walks up with a knife to kill donnie yen i must have missed that scene oh okay so it was after the credits Donnie Yen is walking to his daughter, playing the violin, and he's happy, he has flowers. So he can finally mm-hmm. go talk to her and be part of her life. And then you see the daughter of the Tokyo manager. She has a cowl over her face, and she's walking through the crowd, and then it ends with her pulling out a knife, implying she's going to go kill him. I must have left to her. <laughs> it's okay. I thought that was sad, because it's like there's no happy endings. You know, if he dies, then... He did all of this to escape the table so he can have a life with his daughter. And now he (laughs) just dies. Or if he doesn't die, then he has to kill the Tokyo manager's daughter. I think it's kind of implied that he's he's, he's probably dead. Very well, maybe. Um, Doesn't seem like too many people have happy endings in that sort of world. Yeah, it does not at all. I agree with what you're saying where, like, what's the point of John Wick? I don't think there is a point. I think it's just for action. I'm with you there. Yeah. But just like seeing the what was in it for John Wick at the end of it. It really wasn't anything. Yeah, it's nothing. For like the last two movies was more just about survival than anything. Not about living a satisfying life yeah. as his wife wanted him to. He doesn't even get to raise his dog. Spend time with his dog. It's so sad. <laughs> Can you imagine John Wick 5? It's just him in a retirement home with his dog and that's the whole movie <laughs> that would not be fun you know that would not be uh what's the word i'm looking does he for? kill anyone or does he just no he's just chilling a... he just... <laughs> no killing <laughs> does keanu reeves still play him or yeah why not i don't know <laughs> just bill and ted you know <laughs> you seen the bill and ted 3 i did it was okay for me but i thought keanu didn't do the best because it felt like Keanu trying to be his character instead of actually. His old self, yeah. Yeah. But I thought it was like a wholesome film. It didn't quite have the same it, magic. It was fun. It was yeah. a, I thought it was a fun send-off to the yeah. Bill and Ted movies. They're a lot of fun to rewatch. They're definitely a product of their era in a good way. For sure. I get the chance I might try and rewatch the first one this summer. Oh. It was a little weird, though, with the, oh, with the mom character. <laughs> Now, if you rewatch it, let me know your opinions on the mom character. Yeah, that there's some weird weirdness from like old films where it's like, well, that's kind of that's kind of uh, it's a little uncomfortable. The one that's like really young, almost Bill yeah, and Ted's yeah, yeah. Like you know, it's like the scene where uh, if you watch Back to the Future, you realize that his mom is trying to make out with him. You're like, oh god. Oh yeah, why is this? Uh, yeah, I don't want to think about that. Yeah, actually. exactly. Why is this in the movie? I so on, on a different note. On a different note. <laughs> Any other final thoughts? For me, I thought John Wick 4 was pretty fun. It was a fun movie. I enjoyed it. I like seeing how the director is involving. I really liked Ip Man's fight scenes. I thought they were pretty clean. He does he does such a good job of portraying like a guy who is both aware of his surroundings, even though he's blind, but also blind. So he does a nice mix of like he knows where things are, but he also doesn't know where some things are. So he just you know tapping around. And his moves are so clean. That's why he's Ip Man, dude. Yeah, he's one of the best. I don't think any fight scenes are going to top that one Ip Man scene where he faces eight, was it eight or ten black belts? I, I don't I think remember. it's ten black belts. That's such an incredible martial arts scene. He's definitely one of the best for sure. For sure, for sure. It's great to see him in things. He's also really good in Rogue One. Yeah, he is so funny. Apparently the, co- the funny stuff was him where he's like, Oh, he was also a blind guy in that one, wasn't he? Yeah, he was blind, yeah. I, th- I yeah. guess he's just going to be <laughs> typecast as blind martial arts man Yeah. Now. Yep. Yeah, blind martial arts masters. Yep. I thought it was really fun. 
I liked all the different things they're trying out. It did feel a bit disjointed uh, in terms of like the narrative tone, but that's fine. No one watches it for that. Cause like the fat man was awesome, but it also felt a little different than everything else. Like everything felt a little bit different, a little disconnected. Uh, it was kind of like a series of shorts, like different encapsulated fights, which aren't really connected overall. I really had fun with it. Some of it did feel a little derivative where they had like tomahawk fights. You already mentioned it happened before. Well, that was in uh, number three. Yeah. Was it number three? Anyways. Um, yeah. yeah, yeah. Like, where they're like throwing a yeah. bunch of knives at each other. At yeah. The, the first time it was great. And now when you see it, you're like, oh, that's cool. But it's like, oh, I saw this before. I think maybe it was intentional in terms of like reminding people of uh, the stuff that happened and then I, trying I think that's to. That's especially true with um, yeah. the horse scene. It's like, whoa, he just killed someone with yes. the horse. But like, as it keeps doing it, it becomes less, uh, less yeah. special. Yeah. It. <laughs> I think it's more of a like nice, maybe send off to the John Wick series where they're like, this is everything we did. Mm-hmm. Let's refer I, back to I think to they ended it. on a good point. Yeah. I don't think. Going to five movies would have been the best move. I oh. think by then it would have been a bit overdone. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. I think four was just right. Yeah. But yeah, that's it. I, I had fun with it. There was a lot of cool scenes in there. The dragon's breath, the fat man. <laughs> Everything was fun. That was a fun fight scene. Yeah, that, that, was, fat man. that was a lot of fun. How does he go out? I think he like kicks him off. Uh, yeah, I think bridge or balcony. Yeah, falls and, falls and breaks his neck. And he just punches him to get the gold tooth out. <laughs> That was brutal because he needs proof. Does he punch the gold tooth out or does he? I thought he punched it out. I thought he just ripped it out. It's Maybe I just remember. I don't know. I haven't remember. seen it in a well. while. I've seen Sisu more recently, so I had more to say. But, uh, anyways, yeah, I enjoyed it. It was fun. I just remember when he, when he hit the ground and made yeah. a big thunk sound. Yeah, and... yeah. That was a very, <laughs> knowing that guy was, uh, was an asshole, it was very <laughs> satisfying. <laughs> Uh, I wish they'd make a movie of just just the fat man just going around and doing doing his moves. Uh, yeah, I had fun. I thought it was a little disjointed. There's some things I felt was a little out of place, but there was a lot of comedy in there, like John Wick rolling down the stairs, some of the fight scenes. I think most of the humor is in um, how over the top the action is. I don't know if this is the best way to describe it, but like one of the scenes where the guy's like gets shot two or three times with bow and arrows, and he's just sort of well, his body's dead but his legs attached yes. along, just sort of swinging around it's like that's a human being and that that's what his humor is. that scene was visually like striking like i i know what you're talking about where he just shot his legs pinned to the wall and just like kind of flouse over yeah yeah, yeah that mm. his body just swings at the end of it you're like oh god <laughs> like that that's there's a lot of scenes like that where you're just like Whoa, yeah that's cool what about your thoughts I don't know that I have too much else to say right now. I think, once again, it was a good send-off to the series. Definitely has all that John Wick action. More so than Sisu. I'd say John Wick's get better than Sisu, in my opinion. Although it has been a while longer since I've seen the last John Wick movie. I think it's another great movie, and I think it's a great conclusion to John Wick's arc. I guess to be a bit redundant and say this about almost (laughs) every movie. Good action film to see with friends on a weekend. And um, sure. even more so, I'd say it's one to check out. I think the John Wick series is worth If you haven't seen it, I'd really recommend it. It has a very special blend of action and violence that you can't really get anywhere else. It has a nice conclusion, too. Or at least a satisfying conclusion. I think that's yeah. all I have to say for now. All right. Well, I just wanted to add one thing. I forgot this. But all the stunt people in that film did a superb job. There's like a scene where there's a guy just rolling down an escalator. And he does that without like any padding or anything. He just rolls down a long staircase just for like a one second scene. And there's so many other scenes where just stunt people are, uh, <laughs> you know, have the potential to get harmed in a very horrible way, just pulling off these scenes. And I, I thought that was amazing. And I hope people give more credit to these dudes who are just being put in harm's way just for the sake of you know, making a fun movie and make it feel real. Yeah, they're sort yeah. of the lifeblood of it, yeah. honestly. You can't have all these cool moves from Keanu, from John Wick, without seeing what they do to the other characters and they really sell that they're a huge part of it certainly all right shall we call it there yeah i think that's a good point to call it a day okay well wow it's long almost two hours (laughs) 
Yeah, and you wanted to do three movies. No, no. <laughs> well, I just want to say Super Mario Bros. is okay. <laughs> there you go. Anyways. Oh, that's scary. Yeah. I think more than any other movie, Super Mario Bros. was a really, really fun movie. I know yeah. I say that about every movie, but that's especially true for the Mario Bros. movie. It'll put a smile on your face, yeah. unless you're a really cynical critic guy that just has a big scowl the whole time. Other than that, it's a great movie to check out. It's probably, honestly, Mario Bros. movie is probably my favorite movie that I've seen this year. Wow. I might check Guardians okay. of the Galaxy soon. I had a great time with the Mario movie. It was different, and it was visually beautiful. I really do think it was my favorite movie this year. Okay. You heard that, yeah. folks. We'll probably have more to say on it another time. Yes. For now. A little tantalizing preview. <laughs> Yeah, why don't we call it there? Anything you would like to say before we leave? Thanks for joining us on this podcast. We'll have more stuff going forward. You might see me around a little bit. Better for worse. I think that's all for now. Mm, okay. You know what else you'll be seeing more of? These I nuts. <laughs> God, on that note, see, catch you guys next time. Okay, well, okay, that's pretty good. All right. Thank you for joining yeah. me as always. I do appreciate it. Yeah, it is. Um, I am a bit tired today. I've been uh, getting back from sleep issues lately. But, ah, okay. Um, yeah, it's been good. I just got to take a nap in a bit. I wasn't expecting to go so long. A nap? It wouldn't it just though. be regular sleep at this point? <laughs> I mean, um, I mean the podcast. Oh, the podcast. All right. right. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. All right, well, um, yeah. well, yeah, we'll it was fun. It there. Thanks yeah. for including me again. That thank you for joining. I appreciate you giving me your time. You can't. It's not as yeah. fun doing a solo podcast, bro. I trust me. Yeah, yeah. I I'd imagine it's hard to just talk to yourself for it. It is such a long time. It is. Yeah. Well. Okay. Well, I, I will... gotta head out for now. All right. I... I'll watch Guardians of the yeah. Galaxy too. That's on my to-watch list. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know if I'll watch it tonight. Maybe tomorrow, but uh, sometime soon. Okay. Yeah. All, All right. right. Until well, next time, then. That's pretty good, too.